Well, today I'm going to talk about the ideal lunch, or really you could say the ideal meal, or one of the ideal meals for diabetics. And as you can probably guess from what's in front of me, uh, it is a salad. But don't touch that dial. Ah, ah, ah. I've got some other stuff that's going to go into this that's going to show you how this can turn from a drab, blah, meh kind of a meal into an exciting meal that uh, you will want to enjoy many times, and it has for me. So let's talk about the salad for just a few minutes, and then we'll get into some of the things we can use to jazz it up. The first thing we can say about the salad is a lot of people just don't like them very much for different reasons. Some people say they just don't taste very good. We're going to show you an answer to that, as I mentioned. Uh, secondly, there are some people in the keto world that say, well, I just don't trust plant foods much at all. I'm just trying to almost do pure carnivore. Well, if carnivore is the only way you can beat diabetes, then I'd say, yeah, go for it. But for most of us, that's not the case. And the reality is eating nothing but a meat diet is not natural. That is, people never do that if they have an option to eat plants. The general rule for humanity, and it has been for thousands of years, is if plants are available, eat them. If meat is available, eat that as well. If they're both available, you eat them both. And so uh, the, the carnivore diet is really not natural. It may be a necessary intervention, but for most of us, it's not necessary. On the other hand, the vegan diet is not natural either. It is not natural for people, people to never eat any kind of meat at all. People all have always eaten meat, unless you've got some kind of a religious reason not to, or you've got a really sensitive conscience that feels bad about killing any kind of animals. Uh, apart from that, humanity as a whole, something like 90-some percent of humanity for recorded history has always eaten meat and plants. There are some people who, when they learn that carbohydrates are not really their friends and that they drive blood sugar high, they say, well, fine, I'll get rid of all carbs, which means essentially if, if you're down to zero carbs, you're essentially getting rid of all plant foods because plant foods have the carbs. But I've never found that necessary. It certainly hasn't been in my life or my case. Let me give you a newsflash, something you may be shocked to hear Dennis Pollack of Beat Diabetes say. Your bodies were made to process carbohydrates. They were made to handle carbohydrates. You say, well, then what's the point of beat diabetes? And you keep talking about don't eat too many carbs. They were not made to eat carbs the way most people do these days. We overload on them. During times of war and times of oppression, there have been people who have forced other groups to go on long marches 100 miles, 200 miles in nasty weather. And oftentimes in these enforced marches, people die along the road. Now, that doesn't mean walking is bad for you. That just means when you do it in extreme, under the worst of conditions, and you're just constantly doing, then yeah, that's bad for you. But to go for a 30-minute walk at a reasonable stride is not only not bad for you, it's actually good for you. So we've abused ourselves and we need to cut way down on the carbs, granted. But that doesn't mean we have to eliminate them. And of course, me being a Bible believer, I believe God meant what he said when he said, I've given you the, the plants for food. He later gave us the animals. So he said, I've given you the plants. After the flood of Noah, I've given you the animals. And that's basically how I function. All right, well, let's get to how I do it. Remember, this is how I do it, not necessarily how everybody should do it, but a lot of you wonder, Dennis, how do you eat? What do you eat? When do you eat? And so that's what this series of videos I'm doing on Sunday is all about, how I do it. And then feel free to accept or reject whatever you see. So I generally start with a bag of this... Uh, Classic iceberg salad. Now, obviously, you don't have to buy it by the bag. It's just easier, <laughs> and I'm all for easy. Uh, so I generally will buy a bag. Sometimes if I don't have a bag, I'll just get a piece, you know, a big chunk of lettuce and, and chop it up the old-fashioned way. But one way or the other, you're going to start with some lettuce. Lettuce is not exciting. It's very low carb, but it's not exciting. But that doesn't mean we stop with lettuce. Now, what I generally do after this, because this has just a few slivers of carrots, 
and a few slivers of cabbage and the rest is lettuce. So not exciting, not particularly nutritious, but there's all kinds of things we can add. So I generally will add at least two and often three additional vegetables and just kind of pile them on so that I'm getting a lot more than just lettuce. So one of my favorites is the green pepper. These green peppers are low in carbs. They taste good. They're rich in vitamin C. They're just a good nutritious food. So it doesn't take a lot, but you just cut them up and sprinkle them on your salad. Well, already it's looking more like a salad. It's really starting to look like a salad, but we are not done, my friends. Let's go on to another vegetable. And that would be the cucumber. And it doesn't take much. I will admit cucumbers are not exciting. They're, if anything could be even less exciting than lettuce, it could be cucumbers. But they have their own vitamins and uh, they just help you feel like you're getting a lot more than lettuce. And now it's looking even more like a salad, but we are still not done. We're now going to go to the cauliflower. Cauliflower is another low carb vegetable. It's pretty. It's a different color than green. So you get a little variety of color. And I consider cauliflower to be a freebie. I, I don't even try to count the carbs. You know how many carbs are in this cauliflower? There's just too few and there's a lot of fiber. So I don't worry about it. Looking even more like a, a salad, a mega salad, but we are still not done. And another criticism some people have with salads, uh, they're mockingly called rabbit food. But the big issue for many people is they don't fill you up for too long. They may fill you up for two, three hours, but by hour four, you're starting to get hungry. You're like, well, that rabbit food may satisfy a rabbit, but I'm not a rabbit. But there are some other ingredients we can add to make them much more fillings. The first thing we can do is add some protein. And that can come in the form of nuts. I have some pecans here and we can just sprinkle some pecans. And if you don't have any pecans handy, most people have some peanuts around the house. You can just sprinkle some peanuts over there. What have you done? Well, you've just added protein and protein is much and, and the peanuts are also going to have fat. Uh, many nuts will have quite a bit of fat. Uh, so they're going to be much more filling than just the, the salad and the vegetables. Another thing we can do is add some cheese, some shredded cheese. Again, going to be much more filling. We've turned this from a temporary hunger buster into a real meal already. So the salad and the vegetables and the cheese and the nuts, we're getting to the point where this can satisfy for quite a long time, but we're still not done. What else do we have? So to make it a little sweet, we're going to take a couple of strawberries and I'm just going to start cutting those into little pieces. And really, probably this one all by itself. It's a big strawberry. Remember, strawberries are much lower in carbs than almost any other berry. So while berries in general are often spoken positively of by keto folks, the strawberry is the king of the berries. It has less carbs, has a nice tart, partially sweet taste. And by adding the strawberry pieces, we're going to add a lot of zing, a lot of, uh, a lot of taste to this. And every time we bite into a piece of strawberry, it's just going to taste like more. So, I mean, now we're getting to the level where this salad made by humble Dennis Pollock on humble beet diabetes is probably going to surpass almost any salad you can order at a restaurant with all of this stuff. If, some, if you ordered a salad, you know, you didn't know what you were getting. You just said, well, give me a side salad. And they brought you this. You go, whoa, this is quite a salad. But wait, we're still not done. Now, I went to the store today. And I got some avocados because Benedict and I often add pieces of chopped up or cut up avocado. The problem was they were all hard as a rock. <laughs> so I cut one just to show you avocado, but I'm not going to put it in here because it's just not ripe. It's not ripe at all, but that will add more fat and make the salad more filling. So you can see by throwing in some peanuts, throwing in some avocados and some cheese, 
it's going to be far more filling. And one of the things that makes the keto diet so effective is that it, it is filling and you don't get hungry all the time. And one of the problems with a normal salad with just some lettuce leaves and maybe some broccoli, it's just not going to fill you up. Now, let me warn you, don't spoil your salad. You've got this beautiful low carb salad. Don't spoil it by putting on a high sugar dressing, French dressing, Thousand Island dressing. There's a lot of dressings that are way up there in carbs. And when I was just starting out in trying to cut my carbs, I found that there were two dressings that I liked quite a bit that were low in carbs. One was ranch dressing, not all ranch dressings, but some. And the other was Italian dressing. So, and again, not all Italian dressings, but probably most of the ones that haven't been tampered with. So you find a dressing that you like that is low in carbs. And on top of all of this, there's a couple of items I'm going to add to it. And it is the boiled egg. Now I could cut it in half and then in quarters and then put pieces of boiled egg all around it. But if you don't like to do that, you can just put it on the side and eat it separately. So here we go. Bam. Look at that salad. That is beautiful. That is going to be filling. You have that and maybe a cup of coffee or some kind of a drink that you enjoy that's low carb and you have a meal and there's no, there's no real limit in terms of uh, how much of this you want. I mean, obviously you never want to just pig out on any food, but you could make it bigger. Some of you guys that are weighing a lot more than I do, it will take more than this to fill you up. That's okay. Just know that a salad is basically a good guy. I learned that when I tested my blood sugar, when I was just a young, just getting started learning about carbs and keeping your blood glucose low, keeping your spikes low, I ate a hamburger and some chips some, they were like Fritos corn chips and my blood sugar jumped way up. And then I, the next meal that I tested, I had a, a, a salad, a garden salad, and my blood sugar was just nice. Something like 120 or so before it was up about 185. And I learned my body likes salads a lot better than it does chips and big old buns on hamburgers. Now, let me tell you something. There is no way I'm not smart, that smart that I could calculate how many carbs are in here. And there's no way I could calculate how much fiber is in those carbs. You say, well, then how do you even know that's a good meal for diabetics? The way I know it is my glucose meter tells me you can handle this, Dennis. I can test it an hour, two hours, three hours. I can handle this. I know I can. Can you? Probably you can. Won't guarantee it. You need to test yourself, but this kind of a meal you can. And if by some strange reason you are so sensitive to carbohydrates that you couldn't handle this kind of a salad, then you look at it and you say, well, what can I deduct? If it was me, I'd first get rid of the strawberries, even though they probably don't amount to more than about four grams. So there's, <laughs> there's just not a lot to deduct. You could try to deduct maybe, I don't know, the, the uh, cheese. Most people are not going to have to deduct anything. You can do this. Typically, I eat these salads uh, often for lunch. And I, won't, I won't say every time, but frequently this will be my lunch. And uh, I know that I'm getting a lot of nutrition. I still believe plant food can bring nutrition. I'm, I'm not such a hardcore keto guy that I just mock plant foods and suggest that they they're worthless. They actually work against you. They have anti-nutrients. I, I, I've never bought that. I never will. So you don't even need to bother leaving a comment about that. I just don't buy it. I just don't believe it. I know my meter is happy with this meal, but I will say that by dinner time, I would prefer not to eat this. I will once in a while under certain conditions and occasions, but by dinner time, I'd rather eat something with less carbs still and lean more to the meat and eggs kind of a meal. So, and maybe a chaffle. So that's, that's kind of how I roll. These are frequently my lunch. <laughs> For me, about the biggest negative is if Ben and I are watching TV, while you're chewing on this salad, it's hard to hear the TV. You've got to crank the volume up a little bit because all your ears are hearing is all that chewing <laughs> you're doing. A little more chewing, but it's worth it. So, I encourage you, salads are the diabetic's friend, but if all you're eating is some lettuce and toss in one or two vegetables, 
you probably won't be able to stay with it as a regular thing. But if you jazz it up like I did here, this may be a friend for the rest of your life. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.